Good morning. We are live and it's time to go on the record. The United States took a very measured step. We are prepared to do more. President Trump's dramatic turnaround on Syria after a chemical attack. So what is the U.S. policy on Syria? The more bombing there is, is the more potential there will be for the United States and Russia to be in a military conflict. Senator Ed Markey's caution on a Trump-Putin showdown. There's no benefit to America in having a president who can't get anything done. That doesn't mean I want him to get his way. And Congressman Mike Capuano joins us live this morning. Will President Trump continue to make an end run around Congress? Let's go on the record. From WCBB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill, today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Thank you for joining us live on OTR this morning. Another head-spinning week in politics. Nearly 60 Tomahawk missiles fired in Syria, a filibuster over the ninth Supreme Court justice, and that's just a half of it. To tackle it all is Congressman Mike Capuano, the Somerville Democrat, had a front row seat. The only thing that was missing was the popcorn. Yeah, well, I wish I had some. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, you're supporting the president's airstrikes in Syria, but you want him to get congressional approval. What additional military action would you support there at this point? I'm not sure I would support any. Uh, I, I'm only supporting it because it's it, the egg has already been scrambled. It doesn't help to uns we can't unscramble it, so it's done. Uh, I'm not interested in looking back. I am deeply interested in looking forward. Uh, I'm not so sure I'd support any military action in Syria, but I am open-minded. If the president comes to Congress and lays forth a plan, uh, I will listen. And if it's a plan that makes sense, I'll support him. And if it doesn't, I won't. Would you say absolutely no ground troops? Uh, I would. Let's put it this way. I, I won't say that no matter, until I hear more. Mm -hmm. But certainly I begin from that premise. I presume, knowing what I know today, which is not what I want to know before I make this vote, uh, I would not support ground troops. I would not support further military action. I don't see a plan in place at the moment. Well, but I don't want to say that that's firm in the ground, because if the president comes tomorrow and lays forth things that I don't know about, uh, that the, that the uh, European Union is with us, whatever it might be. Uh, like, these things are fluid, and I think it's a mistake to say this is how I will be no matter what information I get. So wait, wait, how would you how would you advise, encourage, talk with your peers, the, the Massachusetts delegation, in support of further military action? I would, I would most importantly insist that the United States Congress, Democrat and Republican, exercise our constitutional responsibility. I don't mm -hmm. mean prerogative, I don't mean mm -hmm. right. I mean responsibility when it comes to conducting a war. In a missile strike on a sovereign government, not, not ISIS, not al-Qaeda, on a sovereign government is clearly an act of war. And that means, that means the president must come to Congress for their approval for future military action. Uh, president Trump's relationship with Russian leaders has haunted him ever since he took office, probably before he took office. But with Russia's fury over Trump's actions in Syria right now, does this buy him some credibility with either you or with voters or Democrats? It, it, look, I mean, when, when, when there's military action, America, like most countries, we want to come together. We want to be together on the same page. We don't want our internal fighting to be to show the face to the, to the world. At the same time, we don't have a king or an emperor or a dictator or, or our constitution is clear. When it, goes, when it comes to conducting a war against a sovereign nation, it requires Congress to be involved. It requires Congress to declare war. That is a little messier than many countries mm -hmm. have, but it's worked well for 250 years. Why would you want to mess with that now, especially in this situation? The only exception is an imminent danger to America itself. So would, would there's you, nothing, there's would, no would, claim. What, what about the president's reasons for doing it? The, the video well, we've seen from Syria. It's a terrible and the, and the, video, but if that, if, if the question to me is, okay, from now on, are we going to take missile attacks and anybody uses chemical weapons? Mm -hmm. What about the weapon of starvation? Mm -hmm. There are children right now around the world, including Southern Sudan, Dan, which I'm deeply involved in, that are dying every day, a terrible, terrible death of starvation because their government is stopping them from getting food. Is that any worse, any better? There are many things all around the world on a regular basis that are terrible things, and if you show pictures of them, mm -hmm. people are going to get upset. The question is, what is our policy going forward? What are we willing to put our children, our young men and women at risk for? Your, 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 your fellow Congressman Seth Moulton said that, that so this is the president who will, who will take this action here during the week, and but will not open the borders and allow them uh, into this country to, to seek refuge. That's true, but you know, those, are two different, those are two different items. I mean, there are several questions going on here, not the least of which you know, is, is the action that just happened in Egypt this morning. You know, are we the defender of all Christians in the world? And I'm not saying we should. Or we should. That's what Congress is supposed mm -hmm. to do. Let's have this public debate 
debate with the American people and ask our constituents what do they want us to do. And to be perfectly honest, right now the initial reaction in my district is stop. You know, but at the same time, we're only one district out of 435. That's what Congress is supposed to do. Back to my original question, though. Does he buy a little bit more credibility with you specifically, considering that he took this action knowing quite well that no. Russia was going to be quite angry about no, it? No, not at all. I mean, it no, has not absolutely all. nothing to do as not, far as you're concerned not with Not to me this. it doesn't. I mean, you know, the fact that if he, if he thinks somehow this is a macho thing, that he can push a button and throw missiles, well, first of all, I'm not interested in macho activity in the White House. I'm interested in thoughtful foreign policy and thoughtful use of our military. Uh, if it's all about being macho, look, I'm tough, I can do it, uh, that's, that's so as, about as inappropriate as you can get. So as far as you're concerned, all your questions about his relationships or his team's relationships with Russian leaders is still there? And oh, you, God, and, yeah. and you, What worries you the most, I guess? Uh, oh. First of all, military action worries me the most. And by the way, we haven't mentioned North Korea right now, who has mm -hmm. nuclear mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. The Middle East is a hotbed no matter how you look at it. Syria is not an island. It is connected to all the rest of the Middle East. So that's a question. And it, when you get over to North Korea, which is simultaneously going on, they have nuclear weapons on, a, on the, probably the most militarized peninsula in the world. Uh, again, in a very sensitive region with China and Russia, both on the borders of North Korea. Uh, so for me... So is that, was that a... No, no questions are answered. Many more questions are, are put on the table because of this action. Was, was this week a, a double-edged sword, if you will, not only a message to Syria, but a message to North Korea as well? If that's the case, again, I understand sending messages. I get that. Um, but messages also have consequences. And I don't know what the consequence will be. For the sake of discussion, I have said for years now, when George Bush got up and said, we have an axis of evil, three mm -hmm. countries, and he attacked Iraq, well, I don't see why it should be a surprise that both Iran and North Korea went to get nuclear weapons. If, you, if, if, they, if somebody said the three of us were evil people and they took me out, what would you two do? You have two choices, give up or go get a weapon. Or defend. Right, um, All right. I, I want to talk about Neil Gorsuch. He'll be sworn in to the newest member of the Supreme Court tomorrow. Senate Republicans executed that so-called nuclear option to make it happen. In your opinion, I don't, I, I'm going to frame the question this way, and I'm not passing judgment on it. Was it a mistake to use a nuclear option? Um, yes, I think it was, but, you know, it happens. And it, it was kind of surprising that it didn't happen. They didn't talk about it last year when we had a, a Democratic nominee there. But I also think that on some levels, this is a little bit of a tempest in the teapot. Gorsuch is replacing Scalia. It's not going to change the court all that much. Um, he, a very conservative guy is replacing another very conservative guy. So, I mean, the next one will be the more important one, whoever the next one might, might be. But aren't Democrats almost equally responsible, not only by threatening filibuster, but also because they did the nuclear option many sure, years ago? Absolutely. With the, uh, I, again, I, that's one of the reasons I, I'm always try to be careful with what you say you want to get done in a certain circumstance because you will then be running it at some point mm -hmm. and you're going to have to live with your own words. Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I want to point out the congressman's in here this morning. He's not feeling well. Just so a little throat. Thanks for and well, you know, it seems to be everywhere, right? Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the. Thank despite God I'm not the, playing for the sucks. <laughs> that's right, because you don't have to play baseball with it. Despite the fact you're not feeling uh, well, sir, we're still going to do the OTR pop quiz. Do you mind? And what if I start choking in the middle of this? Does that give me? You can have orange juice, but so we can't you get can out have of the pop juice, quiz. And then we'll keep moving forward. <laughs> the theme for today's OTR pop quiz is the Supreme Court. Question one, and this is a hard one. The most, in the most controversial Supreme Court vote ever, Judge Clarence Thomas was confirmed by the United States Senate on October 15, 1991. What was the vote? And it was the narrowest margin for approval in more than a century. I'd have to say 51-49, but or, I don't very, know you're, you're right there, 52-48. The then Senators, Massachusetts Senators Ted Kennedy and John Kerry voted against it. Question two. Of the current 53 men and three women on the high court, two have been professors at Harvard Law. Can you name them? No. Cardoza? Maybe he's one. I don't know who the other one would have been. Justices Stephen Breyer and Elena uh, Kagan. I was, I was not even close. Not even close. So he's going he's to sip <laughs> on the orange on. juice and come right back. <laughs>